Hi, my name is Daniel. This is my bus. Come on in. Hey, Renette. Welcome to the kitchen. So I have a 2005 Ford Econoline. Uh, everything is reclaimed or rebuilt from some other project. The countertop here is a solid surface granite. It's a large crystal granite and it's a solid surface. So it's a mostly epoxy mix, but it's still got that cold feel touch. And it's a lot thinner, which is really nice for being light. Uh, I've got a stainless steel sink in here. It's a full size kitchen sink. Underneath the bus, I've got a 40 gallon water tank and a 39 gallon gray water tank. There's no propane and there's no, no black water on the bus. So composting toilet. Full size sink, so dishes are easy. And then I cover them all when I don't actually want to do the dishes with a uh, bamboo cutting board. Where I keep my dry stuff, I keep it up here in the top. I've got these cool boat lock hinges. So if you come on in, press a button and they lock on up. Front door, I've got spices and in the back, more dry guts. Um, next to the kitchen, I guess I have uh, some electronics. So if I want to charge some stuff, I've got 12 volt and 120 volt. Um, charging points, so cameras or laptops or cell phones, whatever else they are, go in here. And then, what kitchen can be complete without a microwave? Come on, I'm in my 20s. Uh, Full-size drawers, so plates, dishes, that sort of thing. And um, silverware, knives, can openers, whatever else it is. Underneath the sink, I have a 120-volt powered um, about, it comes in at 1400 watts. It's a uh, two and a half gallon electric hot water heater. The water heater heats up more than enough water for me to do a full thing of dishes or take a shower. Or if there's two of us taking a shower outside, works well too. This is my hammock for fruit and or DeWalt tools. Hanging out nicely. Um, well, quite frankly, I couldn't find any bananas, but hey, DeWalt's made in Mexico too, so let's make it happen. I really like having some space to move around in the kitchen, which is why I chose a bus versus a Sprinter van or a ProMaster. So having that space means that I can really have a lot of counters. I've got an electric cooktop here. It's an induction cooktop, works well with a bunch of different pots and pans. Uh, I've got the solar on the roof to accommodate it, so I have no propane and no gas in the vehicle. It does really well for a carbon monoxide or poisoning yourself. Uh, it cooks really nicely, and I've got room over here where I can keep the stove and I can prep over here on the right side. Or even if I'm serving, I can plate on the opposite of the table. So if I'm really cooking something, obviously you've got to have a crescent wrench next to all your knives. As far as refrigeration, I've got a Dometic fridge in here. It's a two-sided, so it's got a full-size fridge and a full-size freezer. It pulls out nicely on drawer slides and doesn't touch the ground. Mostly I keep ice cream and seltzer water in here because, like I said, cooking is nice, but leftovers just get eaten. Yeah, so building a tiny home actually happened by accident. I uh, found myself going to Crags on weekends all the time and I wanted a little bit more space for trad gear or friends or whatever else it was. So I was browsing on eBay of all things at 11.45 in the evening and figured, you know what, I'll throw a bit on this thing. No problem, no stress. And I assume that I'll just get bit out because hey, there's seven more days on the auction. What's the worst that could happen? Seven days later, I owned a school bus, <laughs> and uh, turns out about eBay is it's a national thing. So I didn't own a school bus in California. Instead, I owned one in Pennsylvania. Uh, height of the pandemic, I had to get on an airplane in May when everything was shut down, but I couldn't fly into the state that I actually needed to get to. The closest airport was Washington, D.C., Dulles. So I flew into D.C., got a rental car, drove for about seven hours, Got the bus and then drove for four days back to California, <laughs> where I started the builds. Uh, everything stayed shut down in California, so what was supposed to be kind of a dirty climber van where I could throw skis or have mud everywhere, it kind of transformed into this, where I was worried about custom cabinetry or where my plants were going to go or what sort of sunlight I was worried about. The main reason is, I, if I was going to do something different, I think that I would start with a complete teardown. I would start by taking out the ceiling completely, really insulating, and uh, taking up the floor and really insulating there. I went light on the insulation because I decided, you know what? I love the light. 
it's really nice to have the windows and uh, just the breeze coming in. So with keeping old school bus windows, you're never really going to get super hot or super cold. You can just decide to spend a little bit more power and uh, run that heater a little longer. Cool. Welcome to the bedroom. Uh, so my bedroom is kind of a combo of the kitchen. Uh, I've got a queen size bed and a little bit extra on either end. I think the big difference on having the width of a full size bus is that, well, quite frankly, you've got the width. Uh, I can stretch out, I'm six feet tall, and my significant other sits in here really well too. So besides just having a bed, I can kind of transform the space. So if I take pillows off and I put them on a the table, I, uh, I built it as a Murphy bed. So my bed will fold up and I can walk on in. Cushions will fold down and there'll be nice bench seats. These bench seats have seat belts too, so I can put two people on either side. Or if I'm taking the table out and I want to do dinner or board games or whatever the case may be, the table clips into place. And all of a sudden I've got a, a fair dining space for four people. Um, so I can, I can make a healthy meal and... Uh, we can enjoy it with family or friends. So what's different about this Murphy bed versus others is that it's counterweighted on the bottom, meaning that it's not mounted directly on the back corners. When I'm lifting it, I'm really only lifting half of it because, well, the other side is counterweighting, pulling it down. I get to double use the space. I've got a full-size table here for dining room or board games or if I want to do a puzzle. And when I want a full-size bed or a queen-size bed, I've got the room to move around in it. So. When the table is down, I get access to these bench seats, which obviously are full of storage. I keep a lot of toys in this one, so uh, board games, trad climbing gear, ropes, electric skateboard, chains for when I'm going to the snow and I want to drop my skis out. I usually keep skis on the roof or underneath the side. On this one, it's more electronics. So I've got a, a DC to DC battery charger, which means that whenever the bus is running, I'm charging my batteries. Also, I've got solar panels on the roof. I've got 600 watts of solar on the roof, meaning that my two lithium batteries, which are 138 amp hours each, will charge up in about four hours. And I can pull that power out of them with my 2000 watt uh, inverter charger. So I can charge it either on the shore or it'll power any electronics that I need, more than I need, honestly. So I've got two separate fuse boxes. I've got a 12 volt system and a 120 volt system. I've got five 120 volt outlets. They're all individually wired and they're placed strategically around the bus. So if we want to turn around, they're on the other side of the kitchen or there's some by, you know, places where you want to plug in a laptop. As far as what's 12 volt in the bus, everything that I could. So I've got a 12 volt fridge, 12 volt lights, 12 volt antenna. Only the things that need to be 120 are pumped through the inverter. Well, welcome to my dinette. So if I don't want to go through the work of setting up the whole table or maybe somebody's still asleep, I've got enough space here for two people to have coffee in the morning or me to type on my laptop. Maybe I want to read a book or go over whatever pitch I'm going to do before I climb. Uh, this table folds up when I'm traveling, but honestly, I keep it down much of the time. Uh, there's outlets on either side and... Uh, it's enough place for two monitors and a full-size keyboard, which is great if you're really trying to do some work. I've got a full-size closet. I wanted somewhere to be able to hang button-ups or wetsuits or whatever puffies I'm going to have. Um, so enough clothes for me. And uh, honestly, the rest of my drawers are all filled with tools. Tools here. Tools there. Tools down below. You guessed it. Uh, on the wall, I think the best part about having any van, you just get to put magnets anywhere. And wherever you want to throw them, they stick and you can hang a hat or put a plant or whatever else it is. My plants are all alive, they're all real, and they like different sun needs, so sometimes I need to pick them off the wall and move them somewhere else with a little bit of shade. I cut a hole in the ceiling for a 12 volt max air fan, and if I were going to make any recommendations to people thinking about building out a tiny home, go for the deluxe version, get that in-out privilege. It's so, so nice to be able to pull air into the van and push it out the windows. So obviously we're still a project around here. This is going to be a composting toilet and it's gonna be a recirculating shower. The design I'm still working on a little bit, but I'm thinking it's gonna be able to use about two and a half gallons of water and then take an unlimited shower. Uh, this is gonna be enough space for me to move around, which will be nice. I expect I'll probably be making my own composting toilet. I'm thinking that those nature head toilets just don't really work out cost-wise. So you can do something that's about the same for a tenth of the price. 
So I was really thinking about different vehicles and what settled me on a bus versus you know a Sprinter or a Promaster was just the width of it. It is so nice to be able to stand up completely and turn around or if it's raining to like have a space where I can actually stretch out. It's just wider than a Sprinter van is. And I don't know if you guys have seen, if you're looking at builds yourself, people do pop-outs at the end for their beds so you can actually sleep in them. They're just as wide as a bus. You just don't get the space, people. Go for a bus. I'm telling you, that little bit of rust completely pays off in the amount of really free space that you have to move around or build or make the space your own. Like I said, I designed this whole place myself. I was thinking about it when I wanted to have a space for more people. I was thinking about it when I wanted to have a space to do a cup of coffee in the morning. It's really, really lovely to think, what's the most cost-efficient way that I could do it? Uh, overall, I think I'm about $18,000 in with the bus. I've got a lot of money in lithium batteries or solar panels or fancy components like an inverter or a Dometic fridge or a hot water heater. But overall, it's a lot better than the 50 grand price tag you look at in Mercedes. In the front of the bus, it's pretty stock. Just a new stereo up here, or some more plants, and a hangboard. I spend so much time driving that it's nice to be able to actually keep my fingers strong so that whatever climbing trip I'm going on next, I'm really ready to pull on rock when I get there. In the front of the entrance, everywhere needs a place where you can drop your keys or your phone or your wallet whenever you're walking in the door. I've got some plants, and then I keep most of my shoes here in this front cabinet, so whatever approach shoes that I have, or sandals, flip-flops, shakos, that sort of thing. And I can uh, sit on these steps and put them on right before I'm running out the door. So here on the outside of the bus, we're school bus yellow. It's a 2005 Ford Econoline base. It's a Ford six liter engine, which is famously their worst engine ever. It's a diesel, I get about 15 miles to the gallon, and I take care of it pretty well. It's semi-bulletproofed for those of us doing research. Uh, underneath it, I've got two water tanks. I've got 40 gallons of fresh water and 41 gallons of gray water. On the roof, I've got six different solar panels. I have 300 watts on either side coming up to a peak. They're run in parallel in series, so running into my batteries, I get about 50 volts at, depending, 10 amps on the sunlight. Uh, on the back, I've got dually tires, 10-ply, full-size. Uh, I can carry whatever I want, so if I'm on the beach and I find a cool piece of driftwood that I want to take home, I can throw it in there. I don't live in the bus full-time. It's really just for adventure, so weekend trips or month-long stuff. If I want to go down to Mexico, this is what I'm going to take, and it's got enough clearance that I'm not going to hit anything on the way. I've got a backup camera on the back and then a full-size door. This door is so lovely for when you're laying in bed. You can look out, get some breeze, or you can access anything you want. If you have a surfboard you want to throw it in there, or a mountain bike, or skis in my case, that's where I put it. Uh, my 40-gallon freshwater tank, I welded up some angle iron frames, and I used a car jack to lift it up underneath the bus. It's got four pieces of all thread, one in each corner, that uh, nylock lock nuts thread on to keep it locked in place. And uh, inside there, we've got just on, just on the inside of the bus, is a 12-volt sure flow pump and then it runs through a three-stage filtering process before it gets to my sink or shower or whatever it gets to. If anybody out there is contemplating building out a vehicle, just do it. Man, oh man, having the security of uh, well, somewhere where you can just go anywhere, it's way better, especially if you're young. I know that is strange to hear from somebody who's supposed to be running the rat race and working all the time and storing nuts away for when I retire. I have made the conscious decision now. I'm choosing to live life a little bit more on my own terms. If anybody has any questions about building out a bus or building out a van, heck, if you have any tiny home project at all, give me a call or find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Duffy Life. Be sure to like and follow Tiny Home Tours. Hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner. You know what to do. See you next time.